All right. Yo, 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 what's the deal, man? You already know what it is. It's your boy, Willie B. This is Willie B TV. Hey, listen, I have a, a very special guest, a very, very special guest. I know I say this often, but, you know, me and this man go way back. You know what I mean? So it's a very, very, very special guest. Man. You know, we got Marley Bugatti in the building. How y'all doing, folks? What's good? My man, I appreciate you having me here. Nah, you already know, man. This had to happen. You know, we've been putting it off for so many, so many times. Like, you cancel, I cancel. You a busy man. I'm a busy man. You know what I mean? But we yeah. finally here, man. And I, and I appreciate you for coming down and blessing the platform, man. Absolutely, for real. Man. Absolutely, we in this thing now. Nah, you already know, man. Listen, man, we and we right now we 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 in uh in an environment that's very familiar to you right now, man. We in the studio, you know. What I mean, I don't I don't know if you've recorded here before or not, you know, or, or done your thing, but I know you familiar with what's going on, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, this is this this is kind of a home base in the sense I could say because um it's definitely where my bros is at and uh. I haven't done so much work here, but I've definitely got my hands on a couple of things here. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's more to come. Right, right, you know right. I mean? So we're gonna start from the beginning, man. We're gonna, you know, what I mean, from from the early, from the early, early days of a uh, Marley. You know what I'm saying? So do you do you prefer Marley or Bugatti or Marley Bugatti? Which which one do you prefer? Shit, right now I'm just gonna say with Marley Bugatti because that's I'm, I'm I'm gonna stay with Marley Bugatti. That's the trademark. That's yeah, that's really where I'll be. I mean, yeah, Marley, I know what's going the Marley, on because the Marley starts with when my grandma gave me the Marley Mar. That's where I really started. I remember at. him too. You know I, mean? like, I remember like, him. It was a couple transitions. I remember on, him though. I had to fit some description or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, I had to mix it up a couple times. But I think Marley Bugatti stuck. It's been me for about six years, and that's my entity. So everywhere on any platform you ever look for me, it's Marley Bugatti. And that's Bugatti with B-U-G-O-T-T-I as well. Okay. And Marley is spelled M-A-R-L-Y. So not the E. Dear respect. It's you gonna be in there. It's gonna be in there. It's definitely gonna be in the description. Yeah. All your tags and everything is gonna be there. You know what I mean? So yeah. we we definitely gonna uh, make sure that people know who you are. If they don't already know, if they don't know, they kind of been under the rock for a while. Man. Man. Seriously. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Because this this is one of them guys. So let's let's start from the beginning. Um, where 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 do you come from exactly in the world? Where where are you coming up at? Uh, not necessarily where you born, but where were you raised at? Where where do you get most of your influence from? <clears throat> well. Where I come from is, okay, from hometown of San Bernardino, California. I represent that all the way. I am uh, residing in Riverside as currently. Um, but when it comes to the influence, uh, man, this is hard because it really starts from like when I was one. You feel me? My mom always told me when it came to r and I was I was always influenced by R&B music. R&B music probably carried me a long way into music influenced, like, you know, just being influenced, period. Um, and then I think around um, like the 2002, 2003 is when I started listening to Lil John. I was introduced to bass or sonically I was introduced to bass, you feel me? I think that's what took my interest a lot of times, you know what I mean? Sounds, a lot of sounds put together, a lot of a lot of crazy bass and, um, you know, just, just a lot of jumping music. Just everything that Lil John was doing, Dr. Dre was doing, that was a heavy influence on I me. Mean, I think that's what like molded me and push me and I like that's what just made the dream like be captured like honestly like it was the beginning of the a beginning of me you feel me like that's where it was supposed to start at so that that's about a 20 year journey you said 2002 and yeah. 2003 and I remember those days in music you know because um we're we're around we're we're, we're the same generation yeah you know and um that's when I started to get into music and listening to music but i don't think i had the same ambition as you did mm. obviously for for the music you kind of jumped in and not only are you a engineer you're a producer you're a slash 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 you know so can you tell us about you know what exactly do you do uh sonically and i mean sonically as in everything that you do pertaining to music pertaining to music. so uh yeah i just i mean i just give it from the start to finish so um i start with I make the beats, you know, producer, and then I uh, record my vocals, songwriter, singer, um, whatever vocalist, whatever you need at the time. Um, and then I, you know, I compose the whole track. I really just, you know, uh, mix and master. So I'm an engineer. So on top of everything, I literally have the whole producer status. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like start from finish. I mean, everybody that I work with, they'll tell you, uh, I, 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 you know, I pretty much have hands on the entire record from one second to the last second, you know what I mean? So I literally manage the entire track. So it's nothing that I'm not doing in the record. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and, and it's interesting hearing you say 
who exactly your your musical influences were. You said Little John and Dr. Dre, because right. these are some people who not only are are beast at you know the beat in the producing sector, but they also hopped in front of that mic, which is something that you you do well as as uh, a yeah. as well. As you well, know, so yeah. can you talk about that a little bit? Because mm-hmm. I remember, you know, we like I said, we go back. Mm-hmm. I remember when you weren't necessarily on the mic, or maybe you just didn't let me hear it <laughs> on the mic. But I remember when you were strictly just producing and making beats so can you tell me about the transition from well that's you know, yeah so or what were you doing down to me being uh that you know being a producer and just you know starting out doing you know going through my phases um i learned that putting my own vocals and um learning just the sound waves uh keeping up with the times i learned that all that matter and um just when i started doing vocal placements and you know recording and doing songs i realized that i was actually talented at it uh it, it actually grew me a fan base on the artist side of things and i think it really transitioned around the time of like maybe uh because i've been producing about what 14 15 years so i would say about you know two years into that like uh making beats and all that and just doing everything i've been doing uh i think it transitioned about like when i was 20 years old and then i took the artists okay. but don't get it wrong though honestly i've always been writing music i've always written music like i've always written music in middle school i've written yeah. music in uh elementary i've had shoe boxes i mean those are collections for mine wow wow you know what i mean so like that's 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 truthful but uh, i think the transition happened i think the main reason why the transition happened is because um for a time period it wasn't like you know um business coming in as a producer like selling beats or you know getting placements like that Mm -hmm. so i think what what really drove me was uh making songs you know put my own vocals over my beats and i became accustomed to that became an artist and became great at it makes sense makes sense so so i i want to touch on what you said uh about your fan base Mm -hmm. and um well not just your fan base but um did you get your account deleted it was, or hacked? It was hacked. Because I remember you was at like 50,000 or something crazy. It was uh, like... I think I reached like around like 31K. So I knew I, I I knew it was something crazy. Like you had more followers than anybody I knew. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like oh, he famous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, he already close. there. Well, he already there. That, um, so with the whole hack situation, that was last year. That was at the end of last year. I probably got hacked maybe, what, like September and... Uh, Probably no, I would say no. No, I think September, yeah. I think September it was hacked and um yeah, dude, I followed I, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't I was stupid. I clicked on the wrong link and these motherfuckers had me talking about um I was doing copyright infringement. I'm big because I'm like anything I've ever, ever posted has been my music. You know yeah. what I mean? It's been always what I've created, so it's never a a copyright infringement issue going on here. There's never should be a flag going on through uh whatever Instagram uh, is, is, is marketing or whatever they're trying to trip on. So that's why I was like, what? So it kind of, I kind of bought into that and, and uh, yeah, clicked on the wrong links and uh, yeah, bro, it took them wow. like six seconds and then that was it. Like, wow, uh, yeah, I, do I, was, not, I, I did not know that's how people get hacked. Yeah, the motherfuckers was way in Turkey. <laughs> wow. It was way in Turkey. I got the email and um, yeah, they got me out of there and uh, Instagram took the time replying back. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're going we gonna to get you back there, though, man. We're going to get yeah. you back there, yeah, man. Because that's steadily growing. Cause it's hard work. Growing. You know, like, social media is really like a job. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. Especially if you're not on it like that. You know, like, me personally, I'm not a big social media person, but I noticed that in, in this business of media or music or whatever, you kind of have to have a, a legitimate social media presence in yeah. order to be successful, really. The views count, the image, all that. They want to know who's messing with you. They want to know exactly where you're going before they even put anything into you. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's 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 upfront. You know what I mean? That's like the upfront deals. You feel me? Yeah. So, um, talking about business, you know, um, how important it is. How important is it for you to have all your business straight? I mean, your paperwork, your everything. Like, how do you? How do you? Pro- First of all, how did you learn your business, you know, and how are you prioritizing it nowadays? You know, is it business first, paper late, uh, uh, business first, cash later, or is it cash first? We'll handle the business later. How do you prioritize that? So first, you know, like, where did you get your business acumen from? Did you like go to school or how did you learn how to maneuver in the music business? Hmm. Well, I didn't go to school wishing I did probably. Yeah. Um, but no, I didn't go to school. So what what really takes takes control of everything in that aspect for me is just um, 
being up front, like nowadays, um, you know, people look are, people are looking for package deals or, you know, you got a studio, so you got a home base, so they want to come and um, pretty much work with you where you're at in your environment. So what that comes with is people asking, you know, for the deal or give me a roundup or, you know, stuff like that. So I think it's more business first and definitely cash first because I'm more on the engineering aspect. I'm more on the professional level of getting people their work done in particular ways now. Like, you know, if it's an R&B artist, I'm definitely providing whatever they want. Um, if it's, a, you know, a rock artist, hell, they want their, you know, sound to sound like, you know, whoever's going on in the world right now with rock. You know Led I mean? Zeppelin. You know what I mean? Here you go. You I don't know. know. I, don't know I, I really don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not big on them. I don't know names on the back, so that's yeah. why I'm, I'm troubled with that. But um, really, it just it just comes down to that. Like, so the engineering definitely makes it more business up front. You know what I mean? Like the engineering and having a studio, presenting it as a business, that's what it's, that's what it's become. Okay. You know I, I, I mean? can I can dig that. You know what I mean? So... Have you worked with rock artists, or were you just saying that example? No, I've worked with rock artists. So you're worked. so you're not you're not uh, afraid of working with any type of um, musician. Uh, afraid? No. Well, but, not afraid. Uh, Let me not say afraid, yeah. but uh, you have your preferences. Definitely. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my preference, like strictly a preference. Like, like there's nothing you can do about it. But uh, preferably, there you go. Preferably, yeah. yeah I would say R and B, hip hop. Um, definitely the new sound, the sound way that's going on. These young kids got going on with the auto tune. And so if I, I hit you with a with, a with a with um, a metal rock up and coming superstar, I could, I'll would be you be willing to work with the person? I'll, I'll be able to take full control. Okay, okay, I might have somebody. We, 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 would, we would definitely have to rent out a, a bigger studio as far as you know live recording if that happens to deal with that. Oh, know, I didn't and, even think about that. Yeah, See, that's, that's, the, that's that's why you're the guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's just that's the only thing that comes with that. You know what I mean when you're dealing with rock bands or uh, rock and roll, pretty much. You know, country and you know stuff like that. Live instrumentation, really. Okay, so you know what so I mean? what's your flavor? What what you what are you into? What you listening to? Uh, are you more of a hip hop person? Are you a old school hip hop person? Are you up to the new stuff or what, what's going on? My range is probably like um, that's a good one because it's, it's hard because as a producer it's hard to like not like shit that's supposed to be like whack and then it comes from like the era of me growing up on 50 Eminem G and all them niggas you know what I'm saying like shit like that at the time like I grew up with Bone Thugs nigga you know what I mean like it it's very hard to like separate it but I think as a fan I would go with R&B honestly it's not particular singers I like I think it's just melodic vibes uh, harmonies and I think that's where I'm drawn to music at is just melodic things you know what I mean the mixing um, I think it's everything that happens to do with R&B and soulful music that draws me and makes me focus on music the most. Do you think that comes with like maturity? You know, because uh, you know, like how like how you, like how you said fifty. Okay, because it's been that way. It's yeah. R &B, okay. I, like I said, if, I, if if you go back from the beginning, I told you like my mom's always said like in the beginning, I like voice to men. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like an in vogue. I mean, yeah. I don't know if niggas know who in vogue is. You feel me? In vogue is a uh, is a female group yeah, that was in nineteen ninety six. You feel me? So that's like, you know, end of the road is voice to men. Like that was my song at one years old. I would jump up and, and you feel me? The, I like, know what's going I, on. I, yeah, know, I know what's going on. So like um them honestly, you know, I ain't gonna front. Like I used to like Backstreet Boys and Sync. Um shit. It goes deeper than that. I mean, don't forget nowadays, Usher. Come on now, come yeah, on, man. Usher, oh man, Usher was. Come uh, on, Usher, man. Usher was just a little bit more past that time, but yeah, Usher was. R. Definitely. Kelly before he started doing all the weird R. stuff. R. Kelly, I I took him. I you took, know, I took his music in more as a grown man because it was more of like at the time for me, it, it made more sense for me at the time. So uh, I think R. Kelly definitely has some great music. That's just facts. But, okay. Uh, I mean, whatever. I, I have to ask you this question. You know, this is a little off topic, right? But <laughs> but since he came up, it's off. do we cancel R. Kelly? Do uh, do we separate the man from the music? Absolutely. So we separate the man from the music. Yeah, so okay. Okay. I, that's how I feel. Same okay. That's how I feel. I think that way. I mean, I would hate to know that my legacy went down for one fucking error or if it's a true error, even if it's false accusations. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of people are just, you know, losing their fucking... People lose a battle with depression over shit like this, dude. Like, you know what I mean? So if if if, if you're going to put me in the wrong, at least 
keep my rights the same way. You feel me? At least, yeah. at least let me still be global as as I was and when I shined and when I was still great. You know, because um, you know, like if I'm a gangster and um, you know, I was providing for the whole hood and um, I went out shooting motherfuckers and I shouldn't have been shooting the innocent people, but at the same time, motherfuckers is looking at me like, why you did the wrong thing? You feel me? But they going they ain't gonna just you know forget everything I just did for yeah. them. You know, over the years, I just feel like that's how it should be. I always think that, you know, entertainment should stay entertainment and personal shit should stay personal. Yeah, so separate the, the man Absolutely. from the from the you know let them live. Everything was going let him, on. Let them live being let them live being R. Kelly and if that motherfucker's really out there being the scumbag that they portray him as, then we'll 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 know it sooner or later and yeah. it'll be brought to the light and hey, that's that's for y'all to deal with how y'all deal with it. And me personally, I'm gonna turn my cheek just because stay away from you know what I'm saying, saying, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nah, nah. I feel you. I, I have a very similar, you know, outlook on on situations like that. Yeah. Um, but since we're on, well, since we're on the topic, yeah. you know what I mean? Six nine. Uh, now I'm not saying. Hold on. Let me ask the question. Mm -hmm. Now I never listened to his music. I heard his music and I'm like, oh, okay. I, I know his music was viral. I know I always saw his videos. I I just watched his videos. I'm be honest with you, and his videos always was viral. Never Spotified his music. I never Apple Music. I never listened. I just never could listen to it. Now, do we separate? Do we separate the man from the music, or what's going on? Uh, you gonna have to probably separate me from the six <laughs> because when it comes down to it, bro, I've never taken interest at all whatsoever. Okay. Okay. At all. Okay. Like, I've probably never Google searched him. I don't. I yeah. mean, I, I probably heard his voice once. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, no, but I, okay. But take yourself out of it. I'm saying, do do not saying we because I like you know that's not our. Okay, we going because okay, so we going back to the point of him being like a snitch and all that, right? I ain't saying none of that. I'm just oh, saying because yeah, I mean, I'm even because well, I see that's what I'm saying. I'm okay. not really up to date. Okay, you know okay. What I'm well, he you know everybody know his situation, right? But say he puts out a hot album, do we not listen to his album because of his situations? You know. <laughs> I don't mean to put you in the hot seat. I'm just, I really want to know. Okay, so look. Okay, this is just my opinion because it's like, it's not really my judgment or anything because I don't listen to him. So, hey, y'all yeah. know me. So, um, really, I think what it's going to come down to is just the kids are going to listen regardless. You know, um, if he has fans, they're going to be fans. If they're really that loyal and if he has that big of a following that it looks like he has, then, um, yeah, he's going to he's gonna remain, he's going to remain, you know, successful. It's, there's like I mean there's 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 not much you could really do to like like you guys trying to cancel Kanye Dave Chappelle I mean it's, it, it it doesn't it doesn't add up in a sense it really don't make no sense on our behalf it really don't you know what I mean it doesn't come together for me it doesn't so when I say he's the kids are gonna listen I mean the kids are gonna do what they want to do he's gonna be their favorite regardless is what I'm saying you know what I mean so that's just my opinion. Okay, I appreciate you for keeping the same energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, um, all right, but let, let's get back to you for a second. Okay. I just had to touch your nose just because they came up. Hey, and I just want to know your opinion. Hey, you know? I appreciate that. Um, I, I also, I want to say, you, you know, you're, you're, you're a very well, um, you're a very well, a good speaker. Thank you. You know, um, and knowing you in the past, I know how, how, how smart you are. How important to you is... Um, is education as far as hip hop because it goes back to what we we're saying about business and stuff like that. Do you think it's more important for somebody to be smarter, like book smart, when it comes to music and stuff like that, or should you just learn it from the from trial and error, so to speak? That's hard because look at me, I'm a successful engineer without going to school. So it's okay. like, I mean, if we're gonna tie the two together, it kind of goes hand in hand because, like, if I'm looking at an artist or yeah, because you're gonna educate yourself on hip hop, there's no other way. There's not a school for that. Um, there's there's less education going on for that actually. You know what I mean? There's not no education going on at that. Like you, it's it's what you absorb honestly, and it's that's how you gotta absorb it too. You know what I mean? Like um, I uh, there's no place in particular I could tell you to go and learn this, learn that, learn this, learn that. I mean, if you're an artist and if you come natural, a lot of things come natural when you're an artist. And believe it, it 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 really just sits well with you already before you even know it. And it just starts being, it starts becoming something of you. So like, there's no way to like be educated and 
and what you want to do or what you want to learn or like, you know, going back on facts. Like, I mean, you could read books, you know what I mean? That's probably about it. I wouldn't say um, having an education makes it 100%, you know, um, guaranteed and you being successful or you having a, a good outlook on things of what may be for you. Like there, there could be varies. It, it varies. It really does. Like I say, um, it comes, it comes good it comes bad like if it's up to you if you want you know education to take you for you're going to make it be a, a business and that's in the music because you know business wise music and, and uh business and music matters so if you're not educated with the business you know there's there's a lot of things you got to do and study and there's a lot of things you can do getting out of an education for that but on the other hand now if um there's new shit going on that you're not learning in that education. You know, there's things changing left and right. We got TikTok. We got so many platforms that's like, uh, I mean, there's there's so many platforms evolving for as artists as far as uh, freelancers, uh, photographers, videographers. So, I mean, it, it just really depends on how you absorb things. I don't think there's so much of an education. If you're an absorber, if you're a sponge, if you're willing to learn, if you can sit back and, and you know, analyze things and maybe even double look things and, you know, I think that's probably more your education. I think it's more self education. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think um being in the books or anything like that has anything to do with you. Yeah, so successful. it's more more hands on. It's definitely hands on. Man. More hands on. That's a that's a great answer. Hold on one second, bro. Yeah. I just wanna see something. With it right. Damn, that's way better. <laughs> I'm mad right now. <laughs> Why we was all way? Uh, nah, it was just because I was always, it dark. No, I was seeing dark in in, in your eyes right here. Face. But now I'm like, why didn't I put this right here? That makes way more yeah, sense. It's dark already in the room. That makes way more sense. I'm fucking tripping. Nah, this one the one that is that brought it in. Yeah, this one way. You know what I'm saying? Man, let me go grab a little more. Here, go ahead, hold on. I only I got a couple more questions. I don't want to make it too long. Too long you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I know you're gonna edit it and all that. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, where was I? Boom, boom, boom. Oh, okay, boom, boom. All right, this is gonna come in. Um, so can you tell me about a few of the artists that you've uh, already worked with? I know you've been on some some pretty good projects, some decent big projects. Yeah. So can you tell me about some of your placements and some of the artists you work with, even locally? I want to hear about the local artists as well. You know, because that's what I'm kind of big on is like the up and coming people as well. You know, right. um, so from from you know from your memory, well, who have you worked with so far? Um, well, I mean, I mean, I gotta start with a few big names. It's like uh, my nigga Verse, you know, Western Verse. Um, I work with uh, IBF. Uh, I don't know if y'all know who that is, but IBF, and that's the plug. He's, he's definitely another one that's dope. Um, let's see. I don't want to disclude myself. You feel me? Like I, I gotta, I gotta keep myself. Yeah, number one. You feel me? Like that's just where it's at. Like um, I work with LA Deuce because I know y'all know he's a popping name. He's 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 very household. I've heard him quite a few times. Um, let's see. I mean, there's so many because I could go like as far as uh you know industry or whatever you want to say that's famous, whatever and all that. Have you worked with some industry people? Oh, yeah. I definitely work with, like, uh, Dad from the Cataracts. We have uh, her. Definitely got a placement on her on her first, you. her second album. But it was her first release on her EP that she did a double of. Uh, she did a double release song. Uh, I used to know her. And um, that track is Fill Away. Mm. Uh, I had the opportunity to do some percussion on the drums. And I was in the studio for the arrangements for that. Mm. Um I've been in a studio with, I've been in multiple sessions. I mean, not so much worked and done so much work with artists like big names like Beyonce, but I've definitely been in the studio around her, worked around her environment. Um, Nipsey Hussle, I definitely had the chance to have to sit down with him and uh, be able to uh, play some beats and um, see where that would take us. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't get nowhere. And, uh, and then, you know, RP to the late great. Yeah, that's um, big. You know. You know, so I'm pretty. That's 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 big, man. Um, is there any anything that you you grasp from Nipsey Hussle? You know, I've always wanted to meet him. You know, what I mean, just kind of pick his brain just to see. You know, is it really real? The stuff I be hearing on the interviews and stuff like that. Is he really like that? Um, you know, in you know, real life. Crazy is that even though we didn't have like a, a whole paragraph conversation exchange going on because of course it's producer the artist and I'm letting him hear the beast and this 
more voice, you know, he's listening. You Professional. Know I mean? You know what I mean? So it's more of him listening. And of course, I didn't want to sit there and get in the way of any opportunity that was going to present. Mm -hmm. um, what I got from him, though, is like, um, he was definitely like, okay, I'll tell you this, because where I met Nipsey at was um, in a studio that I happened to be uh, be consistently at, but his studio was upstairs, or no, his studio was downstairs next to a studio that I was in, and while there was a Pharrell studio and um, Cool and Dre studio in another room, it was all in one environment, you feel me? So I always kind of seen him, I always seen his car parked outside. I, I kind of ran into him more than a few times, so it was like, um, a big thing. So I'll tell you the very, this is before the actual sit down. This is probably a couple of weeks before I actually had to sit down with Nip. And um, I'll tell you that when, um, you know, there's a lounge upstairs and you go up the stairs and that's where niggas be smoking and chilling. And um, I remember this is the Grammy weekend. And, uh, this, is the, this is the year that the weekend was on there. And niggas is talking shit. And uh, I remember them niggas is talking shit. Nip was up there probably with his engineer and um, a couple of other cats. And um, I remember walking up and um, I kind of walk up and I'm like, what's good, everybody? You know what I mean? I don't want to act like, you know, I'm all giddy and I don't want to sit there and start throwing my hands and shaking to everybody because I'm, you know, I'm humble, I'm presentable. Yeah. I walk in, I let everybody, you know, you know, get comfortable and, you know, introduce everybody the proper way. But my nigga Nipsey didn't hesitate. He looked at me, he was like, nigga Nipsey hustle, nigga, like, what's good? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I don't know who you are, my nigga. I was like, yeah. I was like, I got you, brother. And I was like, for sure. I was like, I'm Marley, you know what I'm saying? I'm with Ray. And um, and that's pretty much how that kind of cemented there. And then from there, just kind of came on with, uh, you know, a couple more sessions being about. And uh, yeah, that, that happened when uh, Nipsey would have the time to, you know, let me go in there and, and show him some of my beats and I presented them. Uh, he liked them, he liked a lot, emailed him, got his number. Got a text back, you feel me? But uh, yeah. time went on, and uh, just unfortunately, things just didn't happen. You know what I mean? It just had that's what happens in music. You know what I mean? It just happens. Yeah, no, that's dope. Even you know what I'm saying? Even the opportunity, you know, that's kind of one of yeah. you know what I mean. My favorite artist, you know, still to this day, you know, um, just not even just based on his music completely, just you know, based on you know some of the stuff he says and how prolific. Uh, really? No pun intended. You know what I mean? how prolific he was, you know. Really? So uh you know what I mean that, that was that was good for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm glad to know somebody that met him. You know what I'm and saying? Just just cause I feel like maybe even, you know, just a, it maybe something rubbed off on you, you know? I would say that that expression taught me to never like let yourself go unrecognized. Like I think I, I didn't take it personal at all when he did that. I took it more as a like, all right, nigga, I do know who you are, bro. Like, I yeah. like, nigga, I ain't got it. You yeah. got me, you got me. That's what I'm pretty much saying to him. You feel me? Yeah. Like, like, of course I know who you is. I'm from like, California. Like, come on like, now. Like, I love your music, nigga. Like, I listen to everything. Yeah, come on now. Of course I know. But that's but that's that's very humble of him to, you know, not just assume that everybody. And, and he did it in and, and he did it in the in the humblest gangster's way. Like I couldn't I couldn't explain it no different. It was it was him being him probably. It was probably his environment that he probably used to all that and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was it was really Gave strange. that firm ass old hair shake, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I hate motherfuckers that shake hands like that. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, like bro, we don't even know each other like that. You shake my hands so hard for it. It was definitely one of them. Moments. You know. Um <laughs> Okay, man. So um I wanna ask you a few questions, you know, you know what's going on, man. I like to ask people these questions just to kinda get a little more insight into, you know, people's way of thinking and, and where where they where they plan on going and doing it and what have they learned over their life. So okay. the two questions that I, I like to ask are, um, where do you see yourself in ten years? And also if you could tell your something, yourself something uh, 10 years ago, what would you tell yourself? Or even your younger self, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a teenage you, what would you tell yourself? So first, you know, 10 years from now, where do you see yourself? Oh, shit. 10 years from now, honestly, my dream is honestly to have, I take that back. My my honest real dream is, is to really just be supporting my son in his career and everything that he's desiring, everything he's fulfilling, um, anything he's chasing, like if it's music, cause he's definitely a big music head, he's definitely trying to take after me. So that's I think um, that's a very good start as far as where I wanna like, you know, build him up at. And then um, definitely anything else that he pursues, anything he pursues, I just plan on being his number one supporter. And uh, of course, along with success, you know, I mean, um, you know, things are looking good now and I just pray that things get better and better and just, you know, just continue to build, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and just grow family and um, really just 
grow family strength over the time. You know, this pandemic has a lot, a lot to uh, give, and it has a lot. Like, you know, I just lost a few people very recent over this shit. So, like, Sorry to hear that. you know, like this pandemic makes me want to, like, you know, zone in on taking care of family and just making sure that everybody's good and. You know, just that's the next the next 10 years, even the next five years, honestly. And that's just like a plan. And I just want to be sitting right and everything has to come together. And then um, so about the last question, um, where do you see yourself or not? What do you see yourself? But what would you tell your younger self? Um, any advice that you would give yourself or what would, what, basically what would you tell your, your younger self? Um, it's, it, honestly, I would just tell myself. Follow intuition, you know, your gut instinct a lot of times. Like, don't don't ignore it, because I did that a lot. And I wouldn't say it was in, like, um, dangerous or bad situations. I would definitely say in, like, the, um, the, like, I was shy, you feel me? Like, I was one of them shy type of person. Like, my personality is humble, first of all, you feel me? Like, I'm humble. My character isn't, like, a out there person. Like, I don't put myself out there. I'm very conservative or preserved, if you say. And, um... Like, what I would tell myself as a younger kid is to put myself out there more. Like, honestly, you have to, you know, you have to jump the gun. You have to, you know, fuck it, just take the risk. You know what I mean? There, there's a lot of things that I should have, I should have been ahead at. And maybe I'm considering myself a late bloomer more nowadays because that's what I feel like is coming on to me now. But um, I don't want to be a late bloomer. I don't want, I, I, if, if, if I knew all this younger, like I would, I would be very, very successful very very successful so all i would tell the young me is just take that risk um follow your intuition follow your gut instinct don't don't ignore it um uh and to uh make everything matter you know what i mean everything that you do has to matter uh you know and to um don't sugarcoat shit too you feel me like a lot of things that you know you let pass in life may not you know be good for you because it, it, could, it could take you away from you know being a better person and uh the more you uh, learn to just be a front blunt and um just you know outspoken about things you'll learn that you know having that being that piece of letting go really takes you a long way it really does and um I, if you're an adult like me in this day you need peace you feel me you need your peace you need to be at peace you need to have that because we all know that um, you know time ain't promised. This shit is valuable, you know. Especially now, it's really. I, I feel like our time clock is sped up lately, very sped up. So um, I would just carry that with me, and that's one thing um, I tell myself today. So um, yeah, as a younger me, I would just just make things happen faster. Really. Yeah, it sounds like you've had that conversation with yourself oh, uh, before, you know, oh, as absolutely. we all have. Absolutely. You know, because hindsight is always. It's 2020. Thank you. You know, yeah. <laughs> but um, that but that was perfect. That was a perfect answer. Yeah. Um. So like I said, man, this is Willie B TV. You will Willie B. You know what I'm saying? I got my guy. Listen, he used to be Marley Ball. You feel me? But <laughs> you already know what it is, man. It's Marley Bugatti, though. You feel me in the building? You know what I'm saying? Please plug all your your Instagrams. I don't know if you still do Facebook nowadays. Yep, your YouTube. Got it. I got it. Plug everything. Any products you got coming on? Anything? You just your time, man. Do it. Whatever you got. You got OnlyFans. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> I you know what I mean? Only. Okay, uh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, do your thing, man. Do your oh, thing. Like, okay. uh, nah, nah, nah. nah, nah. nah but truthfully, um, yeah, if y'all interested in listening to the music, um, engineering aspect, I got music on uh, Spotify. You can always find anything I've done under Marley Bugatti. Like I said, that's M A R L Y B U G O T T I. And that's across all platforms. I mean, any platform you're listening to your music on, you're streaming. Videos, whatever it is, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Martin Bugatti. Okay. Follow me. I will follow y'all back. Yeah, yeah. We here, man. We out. You already know what it is. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man.